Anthony Dos Santos, the Brazilian winger from Ajax, who we've been speaking about, we've been linked with, and certainly we've been interested in making a move for. But ever since we heard that he was going to cost, as part of the deal, 80 million euros, I was like, hold on a minute. I don't think United are going to be able to afford him this summer. And now Ajax have increased that price tag from 80 million to 100 million euros. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take a look at eight potential alternatives for Anthony because it's time that we start having this conversation. I haven't done one of these videos on Frankie de Jong because I don't really think there are Frankie de Jong alternatives, but there are alternatives to Anthony. And I'm going to run through them in this video and I'll explain as well how the Cristiano Ronaldo situation sort of affects what we do when looking for an Anthony alternative. So make sure you go down there, hit that subscribe button, become part of the community. I'd love to have you on board. Hit that notification bell as well and you get a little ding every time I go live. Join the notification gang. But for me, looking at all the alternatives, you can let me know in the comments. Now, I think there's absolutely one obvious and outstanding choice. And it's Hakim Ziyech. Hakim Ziyech, of course, we know he was in that team in 2018-19 under Eric Ten Hag. Arguably their better team. And he went to Chelsea. Now, at Chelsea, he's had a, a mixed bag. But in terms of versatility, we know exactly where he plays. If Eric Ten Hag is, is as obsessed with this signing of, of, of a winger that's left-footed to play on the right wing, then that's where Hakim Ziyech is going gonna, is gonna to tie into that as well. If you take a look at his versatility, he can play through the middle. He played through there quite a lot of his career. The majority, well, I wouldn't say majority of his career, but look, he has played everywhere on that pitch. And in terms of Hakim Ziyech as a footballer, uh, you won't be surprised to see those stats in terms of the progressive carries, in terms of the progressive passes received. He likes to ping off a shot as well. And given the fact that uh, Chelsea have signed Raheem Sterling, Hakim Ziyech is considered surplus to requirements. And this was an interesting thing that he released only this month, saying that he's reached a point in his life where he wants to take full control of his professional future. That so he is his own agent. And I think in terms of an Anthony replacement, maybe it's only going to be somebody that we could get in for one year, wait for the price tag of Anthony to go down. I cannot see or understand why there will be a better alternative than Hakim Ziyech. Now, you can let me know in the comments below, but I'm going to run through plenty of other options and we can have a discussion. But let me know what you think about Ziyech because I think he will be available at the right price. He knows the Ten Hag way. Very similar to Anthony. Anthony was effectively Ziyech's replacement when he came into Ajax. Certainly food for thought, especially considering he will be available. And given that City are selling Sterling and maybe Nathan Ake to Chelsea, seems like selling to rivals, kind of not really a big thing anymore. So maybe he would sell to United. Now next on the list, I've gone for Pedro Neto, who a lot of you have been talking about. Wolves have been fantastic over the last, what, five, six years or so at identifying, yeah, Mainly Portuguese players, but a lot of players who have come through and shone. Obviously, Ruben Neves is one of them, but there's so many more I could explain. In terms of Pedro Neto, he's somebody who operates, well, everywhere. Again, if you're taking a look at the, the heat maps of their careers, you can see there's quite a lot of similarities there. He, he's a versatile footballer. And Pedro Neto, again, if you're looking at where his strengths lie, progressive passes received, progressive carries, touches in the attacking box, shots total, shot-creating actions... The only problem is with Neto is that he's kind of signed a new contract. When was that? I think that was this. That was early this year. He's got a contract with Wolves until 2027. It cost a fair amount of money. A big whack of money, in fact. I'm not sure that Manchester United... I mean, we could afford him, but I'm not sure we'd actually spend that much on Pedro and Neto. But that's two choices. It's third one. It's not one I've got real belief in, but it's a conversation I think you kind of got to have. Memphis Depay. Of course, we're going to be stung by the history of what happened. But I'll tell you what, Memphis before Luke Shaw's injury, I remember that down the left flank, was cracking. He was never the same player after Luke Shaw got injured. Now, he's surplus to requirements of Barcelona. He will leave on a free transfer next summer. Barcelona know that. He plays through the, the left or the middle. And that will give United options. He's a bit more of a mature footballer. He's a little bit different to the Memphis that left Manchester United. If you look at his numbers again, you look at his progressive carries, passes. That's where his strengths lie. Shot creating actions as well, 94th percentile. That's quite impressive. Do you think the Memphis, we just have to rule it out completely because of what he's done previously at United or maybe rule it out completely because it's Barcelona and there's no way I'm dealing with them again? You let me know what you think about that in the comments. But that's three. 
Now let's start looking at other names. And I don't think this one's too left field to have a conversation about Cody Gakpo. He is PSV's exciting winger. If you look at his heat map for his career, his map, not heat map, but positionally, he's a left winger. He is a left winger. Now, it, it depends whether or not you feel that Eric Ten Hag is looking specifically for a right winger, which I don't particularly think he will be. I think he's looking for an attacker. We've got Jaden Sancho who's been dominating down that right wing in the preseason. I think he will dominate as the season goes on. But I'd say there's more questions about the left wing with Rashford than there are on the right wing with Jaden Sancho. And certainly there's questions through the middle too. So maybe Cody Gatbo we can have a consideration for. Now he signed the contract extension uh, into January of this year. So he's got a contract through until 2026. Again, we'll probably be pricey. But again, if we're looking at players, we've got the Dutch link, the Eredivisie link. You can look at Memphis Depay. You can look at Hakim Ziyech. You can look at Cody Gakpo. You can also look at Arno Danjuma. Now, Danjuma is a player who I think we've been linked with earlier this summer. Moved from Bournemouth to Villarreal. And he impressed, at least not against Manchester United. Remember, we played him. He was tricky. He, I think it was Delo that he gave nightmares to. But look, again, if you're, looking, if you're going to compare positionally Hakim Ziyech and you're going to compare Pedro Neto, you can see where Dan Juma would slot into that. He, he's definitely more dangerous down the left. Nobody would argue otherwise. But he has played in a variety of other positions. And again, strength, progressive carries, progressive passes received, touches in the penalty area. But look, he's more of an actual contributor directly to goals and assists. So it's a little bit different. Again, Dan Juma would be very pricey. But those players there... That's that one. So let's go through it again. We talked about Hakim Ziyech as the number one there. We talked about Pedro Neto, Memphis Depay, Cody Gakpo, and Arno Danjuma. Now, what I'm going to do now for the next three options I'm taking a look at, because I'm looking at eight overall, I'm looking a little bit more central because if Ronaldo does leave or does stay, I think it doesn't really change the fact that we need a bit more backup, I think, in the middle positions. And Jonathan David is a player who has been linked with us pretty much all summer long. He's not a centre forward per se. Of course, he yeah, centre forward is where he plays the majority of his positions, but you can see that supporting striker 40, 40 times, 40 times as an attacking midfielder. He's somebody who can drop and play in all of these central positions. And he's somebody, obviously, who will leave Lille at some point and make that big step up. Now, Jonathan David's exciting. He's a, got, definitely got the versatility to his game. So what do you think about Jonathan David? We've spoken about him before. You can let me know in the comments. Somebody who's completely different type of central player to him. And again, I have spoken about him before. That's Patrick Schick. Now, Patrick Schick is a pure out-and-out -out center forward. There is absolutely no question about that whatsoever. And well, he's playing the right wing 17 times this week. Matt, he is a center forward, a big powerhouse. He is a goal scorer. You take a look at these and look at that. Non-penalty goals, 99th percentile. Non-penalty expected goals, 99th percentile. Non-penalty expected goals and assists, 97th percentile. And clearances, he's cracking at clearances all of a sudden because he's absolutely huge. Uh, but Patrick Schick, I don't personally think that would happen given the fact that he signed a new contract, what was that, back in May. He would cost a bumper amount of money. His deal takes him through when? To 2027? I don't know how much he would cost, but it would be an outrageous amount of money, I think. so. But again, it's a conversation worth having. As is Ivan Tony, and I, I found it a bit weird when the Tony rumours sort of came around. Not because he's a bad footballer, I think he's a good footballer. I, I just I thought it was a little bit left field. I still kind of think it is a little bit left field. Again, like Schick and like David, he's somebody who operates through the middle rather than on the wings. But again, because of the Ronaldo situation, I think it's something that we have to have a consideration about. Now, if you look at where his strengths lie, it's down here. It's about, uh, it's about interceptions, it's about... Aerials, that's not really that much strength. I would say that I'm surprised about the pressures because he, he plays inside that Brentford system, at which we've seen it against Brentford. We know how Brentford play. I was kind of expecting those pressures to be a little bit higher. But Ivan Tony, as I say, it's a bit of a left field conversation. You can let me know what you think about Ivan Tony as an option. But for me, looking at alternatives to um, Anthony, I don't think you can... It, it, it wouldn't make sense to not have Ziyech on top of that list, surely. Because of the Ajax links, because of the Ten Hag links, because Chelsea don't need him anymore, because they've signed Sterling, X, Y, Z, because Anthony was brought in to replace Ziyech. It makes a lot of sense. But if it's not Ziyech, have a conversation about Pedro Neto, Memphis Depay, Cody Gakpo, Arno Danjuma. And then if you want to, go centrally and look at Jonathan David, Patrick Schick, or 
Ivan Tony. That's eight names that I've researched, taken a look at. Big up to you, George, for helping with the research as well. But you can let me know in the comments below what you think. But for me, if we are looking at an alternative to Anthony, I'm not sure why Ziyech wouldn't be top of that list. He's 29. He's got plenty of time left in his career. And maybe if we get him in for a year and then maybe Anthony next year or maybe get him for a couple of years, who knows? But it will kind of make a lot of sense. But you let me know what you think below in the, in the comments below. And as I said, if we're looking at players who are, are, have either A, played in the Eredivisie or B, have an Ajax link, then you've got Hakim Ziyech, you've got Memphis Depay, you've got Cody Gakpo, you've got Arno Danjuma, you've got lots and lots of players there. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe there's names that I've not mentioned that you think we should consider taking a look at. But Anthony, for 100 million, there's absolutely zero chance that we are going to sign him. I think so anyway. I've been reiterating this all summer, not all summer long, last few weeks. I said as soon as that price came out, I said I'd be surprised if we sign Martinez and Anthony. We've got Martinez through the door. Now that that's done, Ajax have really upped the price of Anthony. And I can't say I'm surprised. But you let me know who you think would be the best alternative to look at for Anthony. Because I think there are alternatives available. It's easier to get an alternative to Anthony than it is for De Jong anyway. That's why I think. You let me know what you think though, ladies and gents, in the comments. As you always do.